Friction force or simply a friction is a force opposing the motion between two contacting surfaces. It is due to the minutely projecting particles at the contact surfaces. Here I have taken one example where a block of weight W is kept on, a, on an horizontal plane. In this particular position, there will be no friction force acting between these two bodies because friction comes into play only when there is any relative motion. So if I apply a force P, then because of under this force P, this block may tend to move towards right side. So one force will come uh, between, uh, between the surfaces, between these two surfaces and that force is called friction force which will oppose this force P and try to keep this block in equilibrium. So there will be a force F, friction force F which is acting towards left side so that it keeps this block in uh, rest position. So uh, let us uh, draw free body diagram of this block. So when you draw free body diagram of this block, there is one normal reaction, a, no a reaction between the surface and block and weight vertical downwards. There is a force P and there is an opposing force, friction force F. Now in normal condition, when value of P is very less, this force, friction force will be equal to P. If you keep on increasing value of P, there will uh, F will also get increased, but there is a limitation in the value of this F. F cannot increase arbitrarily to any value. So after some time, F reaches its maximum possible value and after that if you increase the value of P, this block will start uh, moving in right side direction or you can say that it will ex start accelerating towards the direction of P. Now you can plot a curve between P and F. So I have taken this applied force P along x-axis and uh, friction force along y-axis. Uh, so when you apply initially when there is no force, uh, no applied force, there will be no friction force. So and if you apply force, so as soon as you increase the value of force P, friction force will also increase. So it will reach at this particular point which is the maximum value of friction force. This is the applied force P and this maximum value of friction force which is equal to this particular force P. But after this, if you increase the value of P, value of F cannot increase. So it will suddenly come down. So value of F suddenly come down and after that it will remain constant. So initially it value of friction force increases with the value of applied force P. But after reaching the value of P, a particular value of P here, after that its value become constant and it is equal to uh, this particular value. This maximum value of friction force is called limiting friction. So this is F maximum and this F max is called limiting friction. You might have experienced while pushing one Almira towards right side, initially you require a greater force to start the movement of this Almira but once it started to move, you require lesser force. This is because uh, this maximum friction force, first you have to reach this maximum friction force to start the movement of this Almira. Once you have started the movement of Almira, its uh, opposing force that is friction force get reduced and therefore you require lesser force to keep it, uh, keep it moving. Coulomb in 1781 and Morin in 1831 conducted experiments on solids in dry condition and outcome of these experiments are law of dry friction. So first law states that direction of friction force is always opposite to the direction in which body tends to move. Uh, here this block is tending to move towards right side under this force P and because of friction force is acting opposite to this, uh, opposite to the impending motion of this block that is in left side direction. Similarly, this friction, uh, we uh, experience friction force in our daily life when we, during our walk, we push the road uh, towards back side and because of that push, uh, friction force comes into play and it, uh, it, it is applied in forward direction and this friction force allows us to move in forward direction. If another example in a bicycle, you can see that um, uh, in uh, rear wheel we transfer uh, uh, using this sprocket, using sprocket and chain, we uh, transfer one torque to this rear wheel. So we are actually um, uh, providing one torque to this rear wheel in clockwise direction. So we will try to move this wheel in clockwise direction. Because of that, this moment, because of this moment in clockwise direction, friction force acts, in to, uh, acts towards the forward direction. So direction of friction force will be towards forward direction. Now because of this friction force only, this entire cycle and this man is moving forward direction. 
Now, what about this front wheel? In this front wheel, we are not providing any uh, movement or any torque to this wheel. Actually, this wheel is move for, uh, moved forward because of this, uh, 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 this frame, which is pushing this wheel towards, towards front direction. In this direction, this, uh, this frame is pushing this wheel towards this direction. And because of this movement, the, uh, um, the friction force will act in opposite to the direction of movement. So it is trying to move in right side direction. So friction is acting at the contact surface in backward direction. So friction force will uh, act on uh, this backward direction. And this friction force provides the necessary moment and uh, necessary moment to move this, uh, this wheel in clockwise direction. So after that, it will start moving in or rotating in clockwise direction. So remember that in drive wheel, its direction of friction force will be towards the movement of vehicle and in uh, this wheel where we are not providing any torque, the direction of friction force will be opposite to the direction of motion. Now second law is friction force is equal to the applied force which tends to move the body. Now the applied force which tends to move the body uh, is equal to the applied force till its maximum value not reached. We, uh, we have discussed this before also. Uh, from this figure itself we can say that when applied force is less the same value of friction force you will get and till the value of uh, value of p reaches to this particular value this is uh, this is which is equal to maximum value of friction force and up to this applied force and friction force will be uh, will be always same now the third third law states that the limiting friction that is the maximum value of friction force acting between two surfaces is proportional to the normal reaction between the two contacting surfaces so there is a normal reaction this normal reaction and uh, this friction force f so now value of this friction force remember one thing that this normal reaction and friction force these two are always perpendicular to each other now this friction force is proportional to this normal reaction so i can write this maximum value of friction force the maximum value of friction force is directly proportional to normal reaction and to remove this proportional sign i use a constant mu which is called coefficient of friction mu is called coefficient of friction which is a constant between two contacting surfaces if uh, if you take a, another set of surfaces then its value will be different but a for but for a particular set of surfaces value of mu is is a constant so maximum value of friction force that is f is equal to mu into n where mu is a constant between two contacting surfaces so here you can see that this particular maximum value of friction force this is equal to mu n not any other friction force only this maximum value this is which is called limiting friction now fourth one is the force of friction is independent of the area of contact now force of friction does not depend on the area of contact so here uh, i can take one example this is uh, one block which is kept on one surface so if you apply force then maximum friction force which it can generate is mu into n where n is the normal reaction in this block and mu is the coefficient of friction between these two surfaces. If I keep this same block in different orientation, for example here I have kept this block uh, in uh, here in this particular position so that the area of contact here now you can see that area of contact in this particular case is lesser as compared to this case. Now in this particular case again uh, Area of contact is less, but since both materials are same and their weight is same, so normal reaction will be same. And therefore, the, in both the cases, this maximum value of friction force will be equal to mu n and will be same. In third condition, here I have changed the orientation. The same block I have kept vertical in this way. Uh, this uh, smaller surface, uh, smaller area of the surface is kept in contact with this block. Again, you will get the same value of f. Uh, if I have assumed that this entire surface all surfaces are, uh, are, are, uh, are, are similar to each other and so between these two surfaces the friction force will be same so it is independent of the area of contact and fifth is once the body starts moving friction force get reduced and can be obtained by the relation f is equal to mu k into n this i have explained before also so you can see that here once it reaches the maximum value if you keep keep on increasing value of applied force p then friction force will get reduced suddenly it will get reduced and then it become constant now this value of friction force this value of friction force 
which is lesser than the maximum friction force this is the maximum fr friction force which is equal to mu n and it this one is a smaller friction force this smaller friction force is obtained when uh, then when body is in moving so this value is given by uh, f is equal to mu k into n where mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction and its value is always less than the coefficient of static friction so value of mu k is lesser than value of mu thank you for watching this video in my next video i will explain what is angle of friction and what is angle of repose and difference between these two angle of repose and angle of friction